back to Flint Hills. I'm Jeff. As you may have seen from my previous videos I do like my departmental trains. So in this video I'm going to share my thoughts on the latest offering from Gauge Master. This would include the latest new measurement train which I'm really happy with and the new class 723 which I think is really really disappointing. So to start with Let's look at the old day pole and the new gauge master new measurement train. I'll explain about the extra coaches and how I've added some working lights to both these models. In 2012, day pole made the class 43 HST twin pack in the new measurement or NMT livery, sometimes known as the flying banana. This was sold as the Daypole ND111E as a two car multiple unit with one motorised and one dummy unit. It was also DCC ready with a six pin in each unit, so two decoders were required. Unfortunately it would appear that Daypole didn't make any of the coaches to go with the 2012 livery. However, whilst at the International Engage Show or Tings, I found a stall with a gentleman selling the complete 2012 uh, livery sets which he had modified, repainted and detailed to match the livery of the version of the NMT. There was the staff coach, the conference coach, the overhead line inspection coach that you're looking at now with the white lights over there and the track recording coach and finally the staff coach. As you can see I've already added the white lights to the overhead line inspection coach and the track lasers to the track recording coach. The new gauge master set GM2210303 is actually made by Daypole. This set comes with one motorised and one dummy unit with two coaches. This set also shows the updated livery which is about the 2016 I believe. The class 43 power cars are DCC ready with the next 18 sockets and I fitted the Zimmo decoders into mine. It doesn't come with a speaker yet however there is room for a sound decoder and a speaker. The Zimo MX659N18 sound decoder and a sugar cube speaker will fit on its side to the rear of the chassis. As I said, this set does come with two NMT coaches. However, we are still missing three coaches to make the formation. Thankfully, a very nice chap called Ullen, who has an eBay shop called ARX Models, has taken some Mark III coaches and has modified, repainted and detailed them to match the livery of this version of the NMT so you can complete the formation. So here is the new Gauge Master set made by Daypol and, and as you can see I have some of the extra coaches uh, made by Allen. There's one there with the overhead line which I'll be adding some lights to very soon and the recording car which I'll be adding some lights to soon and as you can see here I am missing one coach which Alan is currently making for me so I'm looking forward to receiving that very soon and that will complete the uh, formation so let's go and have a look now at installing some LED lights into some of these units I'm going to be installing two modules and both have been purchased from Illuminated Models who has an eBay shop. The first module is the laser car circuit and then the second module is the lights for the Pantograph car. So let's have a look at these in detail. 
So I take the uh, the first coach car and uh, gently prise it open, and then um, I've got to remove the wires that go up inside. I'm just removing the bit of tape, and then I desolder the two wires, so I've got full access to the chassis without damaging the uh, the coach which has been fully decorated. I then test fit the actual module that's going to go into the base of the train and uh, you can see that there is actually a centre rib that goes right through the middle and I've just got to take that out so the, uh, the printed circuit board lays right in the bottom there and I've also got to take out a slight piece of the actual bottom of the uh, carriage for the stay alive so apologies for those who uh, have a disposition of the uh, dentist but I'm using the Dremel here with a little sanding pad just to uh, sand away that middle section of plastic and then with that cleared away I can offer up the, uh, the printed circuit board and make sure that fits in the bottom nice and neatly and squarely there we go happy with that so of course what I've got to do now is to clear up what I now do is I apply a bit of uh, masking tape and uh, I mark out the bottom nice and squarely and then I mark out exactly where the lights are or the LEDs on the printed circuit board are so I know where to uh, drill the holes so the lights will shine through onto the track. So using a small drill bit in my Dremel I can uh, easily drill the four holes in the bottom where the white and the red LED lights are going to come through. I peel back the masking tape and I'll just double check everything fits and I can just see everything's in alignment. As before I put some masking tape on the sides to mark off where the green LED stroke laser is going and then I use the Dremel just to drill those two little small holes at the side so the light can come through and then once happy I'll clean up everything again. I connect up the printed circuit board using this very thin Teflon coated uh, wire. A um, bit of a painter strip, but uh, it's not too bad. So I just trim the ends up and then apply a little bit of uh, flux to the tabs on the printed circuit board. There we go. And then the wires just touch on, as simple as that. And then I do exactly the same and wire the other ends to the uh, coach. Apologies for the hand in the way. So, very fine wires and getting everything to hold. That's it, and that's the printed circuit board. And we just slot that in, and now it's ready for testing. With it all wired up and the carriage on the layout in DCC, uh, I'm very pleased with the effect. Even with the house lights on, um, it's bright enough so you can see exactly what's going on. So the big stay alive capacitor is just slightly in the way so I've just got to take a fraction out of the bottom of that unit. I've marked it off where it's got to go so again with the Dremel we can just sand that little bit out and then we can uh, fit that all back together. So here is the uh, unit all fitted in and we connect up the, uh, the roof. One train done. So with the carriage back on the track, yeah, really, really pleased with the outcome of the uh, the white, the red and the green laser lights. So let's look to install the white lights on the overhead inspection carriage. So I'll take the coach and uh, gently remove the, uh, the lid which has been modified. And inside the Daypole coach there's actually a socket for the carriage lighting. 
So what I'm going to do here is the printed circuit board that's got the four LEDs on, I'm going to connect up to one of these little connectors. So with the uh, connector soldered to the uh, pos and neg, I simply just have to plug it into the coach, making sure I get the pins the right way around. And then I take the printed circuit board and I lay it down. It just fits perfectly. And then I'll slide it right the way up to where the um, the pin is. There we go. Perfect. And now intermission, because silly me forgot to turn the video on when I was drilling the holes for the lights in the roof. So apologies for that. However, just like before, I put some masking tape on the roof, marked up where the LEDs were on the printed circuit board for alignment, and then I drilled through the roof where the four holes are for the lights. Um, very, very simple, and then I reassembled the unit. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with the effect. Gives that lovely blue towering light up like the real thing. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with the Dapol and Gauge Master versions of the new measurement train. Um, it's excellent, really, really pleased, and a great shout out to Alan for making all the additional coaches for me. So let's turn our attention now to the Gauge Master Class 73 in the Network Rail Yellow and the model number is GM2210205. So let's unbox and see what we have inside. So we open up the box and the first thing I see is Daypole written on the jewel case and instructions uh, by Daypole. So this is another commissioned Loco from Gauge Master using Daypole. So it looks really nice in the box. And as always, these are not always easy to get out these jewel cases. Uh, per normal comes with the standard packet of different uh, attachments so we'll keep them safe but what I did notice there was the where the battery box is that whole assembly is very very loose and um, it looks a, it's really plasticky and there seems to be an, an awful amount of play on the chassis. So let's open her up and uh, let's have a look inside for the de decoder. So we've opened up the uh, the loco and what I've noticed is the wires going to the front and to the rear um, which connect via this multi-plug is only for front lights there is no rear lights so um, it's only going to be white in one direction or white in the other direction there is no red lights and there's the old six pin uh, decoder in this uh, unit so it's not been updated for the uh, the next 18 let's get it on the uh, rolling road I've run the unit in, in uh, for 30 minutes in both directions. However, 
it's not the best runners as you can see and at um, slow speed it's juddering and stopping and uh, it demands quite a bit of power to get it to go so um, it's definitely not the uh, the smoothest of locos um, that I've uh, used after running them in I've left this clip in because it gives you a real chance to hear this motor uh, is just all over the place At this point I decided to take it off the rolling road and to have a quick look inside again before I put the chip in. What I did notice though, just before I went to put the chip in, uh, is the chassis actually kinked and you can see. The chassis is that poor that the uh, front bogey has got so much movement in that it actually comes out. And uh, I found that amazing that a brand new train has got that much movement. Here again I'm looking down at that front bogey and I can clearly see now that that part of the chassis is completely um, distorted and the two parts where I'm pointing to here just don't meet correctly. Um, yeah it's awful. Looking at the chassis in more detail, I can see there's two screws that keep the chassis together are for that bogey. But the front, there's just one. There should be one here, because it's at the front where everything is loose. Um, yeah, it needs something rigid across there to hold that tight and to stop it from distorting. Anyway, after looking at that chassis and can see it's uh, absolutely uh, not fit for purpose. I've added the six pin uh, Zimo decoder. Um, this is the standard six pin decoder that I use. Uh, I just really love the Zimo decoders. I'll put the uh, decoder in now and then put it back on the rolling road and it did make a big difference actually. It seemed a lot lot smoother. Not brilliant but certainly smoother than uh, what it was without the uh, decoder in. So uh, perhaps there's hope yet. So after another running in period, um, let's get it running on the layout. The issue was that it kept stopping and stalling, um, sometimes on the points and uh, sometimes just on straight bits of track, which I know are clean. And uh, yeah, little hand of God, give it some encouragement. Check the wheels. Yep, seems to be a loose connection in there. And off we run again. And yep. And in the uh, other direction this time. And again. Well, I can't show any more running shots because it just kept stalling and dying. It was clearly to do with that front bogey that just keeps coming loose. Um, it's clearly other issues there because the motor's not running properly, the contacts uh, are not right. It's a very disappointing model. It's only got white lights, there's no red lights. It's okay, it's six pin, but I'd have expected a new model now to be next 18. So the chassis is very, very poor, uh, as we've seen. So this one's going to be going back um, on uh, Tuesday morning, and we'll wait and see what uh, they do to repair it. But it's certainly a non runner, and uh, I can't use it on the layout. Well, I hope you found the video interesting and the difference between the Gauge Master Stroke, the Daypole new measurement train and the uh, 
very odd class 73 which is very very poor um, in the next video I will be looking at the Kato uh, class 800 that's now around uh, please like and subscribe to the uh, to the channel and I hope to see you very soon and I'll leave you with some running shots of my two flying bananas take care